You know those parts of your Java code where you're constantly checking if something is null before performing an operation? Well, there's a cleaner way to handle it using Java's optional class. Think of the optional as a container that either holds a value that is not null or nothing at all. It's designed to eliminate null checks and avoid null pointer exceptions by wrapping values that might be missing inside a container. Take this user class as an example. It's a simple class with a string member called nickname that's null by default after instantiation. And instantiation simply means creating an object from a class using the new keyword. Now, in order to use the nickname for something somewhere else in the code, we might have to manually check if it's null before using it, as shown here. Compare that to the same user class, but now we're using an optional to store the nickname. The optional is a generic class that is just a container that can store any type. Here, it's storing a string, but it can store any data type that's not primitive. If you need more details on generic, check out my recent YouTube video. The main difference here is that the default is empty and it's not null. We can set the member like this. Notice we're using optional of string and not the string itself. We can now later access it somewhere in the code like this, where we check if the value is present before doing anything. We can also condense it to one line here like this. We try to get the nickname and if it's empty, we use the no nickname string as default. The whole idea behind the optional is to make your code more explicit and less error prone. Instead of having invisible nulls sneak into your program and crashing it, you're telling the compiler and your future self, this thing might not exist, so handle it properly. Other languages have similar concept baked in even more deeply. In Swift and Dart, optionals are built directly into the type system using a question mark. Dart makes you explicitly say when something can be null, so you're forced to handle potential null values properly either by providing a default value or by adding null safety checks in your code. In Rust, you have the option type where you must handle both some or none values directly. So the next time you're about to return or set something that could be null, think again. Try wrapping it in an optional instead. The code will be cleaner and safer. Follow my codes for more programming videos like this.